Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on the video. It's time to start getting ready for those Halloween parties. So today, we're gonna DIY instead of buy. I'm Lacey, and I'm gonna show you how to make four different Halloween suckers that are perfect for the kids to hand out at school. So let's jump into the first DIY. This one's going to be a ghost sucker, and we're going to use some Tootsie Pops for this, and there's a clip of the barcode of the bag I'm using. You're also going to need two colors of ribbon. I like to use orange and black, but any Halloween colors would work. You'll need a black Sharpie and some tissues. Now I know you've seen this done before, but it's a classic. It just isn't Halloween without a ghost sucker. So the first thing I like to do is get all of my ribbons cut. I cut them at about eight inches long and I'd rather have too much ribbon to work with than be struggling trying to get my knots tied. Man, oh man, times are changing people. I used to make these with one tissue. Look at how see-through that was. I had to use two tissues for this batch. And I still think I could see through that a little bit. So two tissues, Put your sucker in the middle and pull the Kleenex down around it to make your spooky ghost cape. Then I'm going to take my orange and black ribbon at the same time and I'm going to tie two knots. And it's as easy as that. All that's left to do is add a little ghost face to it. So get your black sharpie and draw two eyes and a mouth. And you can be as creative as you want to be with the mouth and the eyes. Sometimes I like to make the mouth a little bit wavy to make it look like it's going hoo. So I'm gonna make a few more on video. And I did find that as I was working with these, since I had to use the two tissues this time, I thought it looked nicer when I would lay the tissues diagonally to each other, like this. It just looked nicer at the bottom of the cape. It laid nicer. And that's all there is to it. It is the easiest Halloween sucker ever, but definitely very impressive. But now I'd like to show you a variation on the ghost sucker. This time we're using coffee filters instead of tissues. Everything is pretty much the same. You're gonna start cutting your ribbons out at about eight inches long, grab your Tootsie Pop and a coffee filter, and put that coffee filter right over the top. You guys, it's the same thing here. Look at how see-through that is. I added a second coffee filter to this. I pinch it tight at the bottom of the sucker and then tie your ribbons on. This one is much fuller. I would say it's more like, it looks like it has a petticoat or a crinoline underneath the cape. Whereas the tissue go sucker, looks more like when a child wears a sheet as a ghost costume. And I did notice that it was not as easy to draw the face on the coffee filter ghost. It, like the, the wrinkles in the paper made it so it was really bumpy to make your eyes nice and round. Whereas on the Kleenex one, it kind of like just soaks up the marker and makes a nice round eye. So either version that you choose to make is going to be extremely budget friendly. I got my tissues at the Dollar Tree for $1.25 and I think there was 120 tissues in a box. And ribbons were from Walmart and I want to say those were $1.40 a roll. Um, if you go the coffee filter route, that was from the Dollar Tree as well. So 150 coffee filters for $1.25 very budget friendly these are the quickest of all the suckers we're going to make today so a lot of bang for your buck here if you're starting to feel inspired please give this video a thumbs up and with that we'll get into our third diy this is going to be a pumpkin or jack-o-lantern sucker we're going to use the tootsie pops again you're going to need orange and green tissue paper a ribbon of your choice. I just thought these little polka dots were cute. You're going to need some scissors, a ruler, and we're also going to use a Kleenex. Again, I'm going to get my ribbon cut first. These again are going to be eight inches long, but they probably could have been a tad shorter for this DIY. 
and then next I take that Kleenex and I lay it on top of my green tissue paper. You're going to cut your green tissue paper to the size of the Kleenex. You're going to have one green tissue paper square for each sucker. So continue cutting those squares out. On a little side note, you could use blow pops for all of these DIYs. I just prefer the Tootsie Pops because they twist at the stick of the sucker, where blow pops twist up off of the top of the sucker. So these give a smoother finish to your project. I just quick eyeballed how large the green squares were, and I cut an orange square out slightly smaller. You can see right here, it's maybe about a half inch smaller on each side. And you're gonna need one orange square cut out for each sucker. Now it's time to assemble the pumpkins. You're gonna take one orange and one green tissue paper square, set the green one on top of the orange. I took the Tootsie Pop, put it in the center, and pulled all the tissue paper up around it. So now you have like an orange pumpkin on the outside and green stems coming up the middle. Then just take your ribbon and tie two knots. It's that simple. You could stop right here and just have little pumpkins. Or you could take it to the next level, be a little extra, and add a jack-o'-lantern face. These are almost as easy as the ghosts were. The only thing that makes them harder is all of the cutting of the tissue paper at the beginning. But after you get everything cut out, I just worked in an assembly line. I would get all of the pumpkins wrapped in the tissue paper, and then I would add the jack-o'-lantern faces afterwards. And it really made for quick work. It's just that initial cutting of all the squares that took time. And there we go, putting our two eyes, a nose, and a mouth on. And don't forget, you want to fluff up your little top of your pumpkin. And if you need to, trim your ribbon. And you got a cute little jack-o'-lantern. Look at that cutie patootie. Have fun and get creative with your faces. Each one could look different. I did some that had a traditional jack-o'-lantern face, and then I would do one that would have a zigzag mouth, or maybe just a normal little smiley face on it. Just have fun with it and be creative. For our last DIY, we're going to make a vampire sucker. Now you know how I feel about Tootsie Pops versus Blow Pops, so pick your choice. I'm using Tootsie Pops. You'll need black crepe paper, a ruler, some scissors and tape, also an ink pen, some red ribbon, you don't want it too wide, some googly eyes, red tissue paper, and white cardstock. Oh, and a glue gun. Hey, guess what? I'm cutting the ribbon first, <laughs> like I have every other time, at eight inches long. It's better to have too much than too little. Next, I'm gonna start cutting squares out of the red tissue paper. These are about six by six inches. And I'm taking the sucker, sticking it inside there, and again, it is see-through. So I'm adding a second square of tissue paper to these. So each sucker will need two six by six squares of red tissue paper. Every vampire needs his cape, so I'm using the black crepe paper for that. Just squeeze the crepe paper at the base of the sucker. You want it to come up high enough that it looks like the neck of a cape, and then long enough that it will go down the entire stick of the sucker. So mine was about five inches long. And I got a bunch of those cut out ready to go. And of course, you gotta have your vampire fangs. So I made a strip about a quarter inch wide on the cardstock and cut that out. I'm going to cut triangles out of that strip. Originally, I was trying to make them so they connected on the top and just had two little teeth at the bottom, but it just didn't look right. So single triangles for the fangs, in my opinion, look better than having like a full set of teeth across there. And here's just a close up of me cutting those out. If you've stuck around to this point of the video, let me know by leaving a vampire emoji in the comments. All right, let's assemble this little man. 
So you're gonna take your Tootsie Pop and you're gonna put it in your first red tissue paper square, twist it tight at the bottom and tape it in place. Now remember, these were very see-through, so I'm adding a second layer of that tissue paper, but that's completely a personal preference. If you don't mind that you can see the Tootsie Pop label through it, then go ahead and just go one square of tissue paper. So now that they're both taped on there, we're gonna get our black crepe paper cape and our red ribbon. So I'm lining up the crepe paper with the sucker and I'm squeezing it at the base of the sucker. That's where I'll do two knots with my ribbon and I'll trim the ribbon down to about the length of a necktie. And at that point, I'll stop with the assembly of that sucker and move on to the next. Like I said before, I prefer to do these in an assembly line approach. I'll do everything of one step and then move on to the next step. And I do gotta give you a heads up. These little buggers were slippery. I don't know if it was just like the silky ribbon or the crepe paper or because I had that scotch tape around the stick, but they did not want to stay tied in there. Those suckers just kept slipping right out. So be ready for that. Moving on to the next step, we got to give this vampire a cute little face. So I just used a tiny little bit of hot glue and put a googly eye on and then the other. I didn't care for how wonky the tie was looking, so I put just a tiny little bit of glue between the two flaps of the bow and just stuck them together so they would point more downward. And then we do the same thing with our little fangs that we made. Just a tiny little bit of glue and put that fang on. Here's a close-up shot of how I fix those neckties. And my first approach with the fangs was to put the glue onto the sucker and then attach the fang, but I did find that it worked better to hold the fang with some tweezers and put the glue on the fang first and then attach. It was a much better approach to it. Yeah, much easier to do it that way. To finish them off, I just trimmed up their cape so they were the length of the sucker, but that was a personal preference. And we have our vampires. Let's check out the final reveal. Thanks so much for watching today, you guys. I hope you were inspired to create something sweet this Halloween season. And if sweets aren't your thing, I got you. I have a video coming out soon packed full of healthy Halloween snacks. It would really make my day if you'd high five that subscribe button and help me reach my goal of 25 subscribers by the end of October. Thank you so much for watching today, you guys. I'll see you in the next one.